I'm calling the, the contest to order. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Southwest Division, and I know some of you have made the journey from very far away, some from other states. Thanks, Ethel, for being here. My name is Helen McCullough. I am the Southwest Division Governor, and I welcome you to our division contest. For weeks, for weeks, Toastmasters around the division have been practicing, competing from their club, from their area, and here we are at division. I am so excited to be here today, mostly because I think it's one of the last official duties I have to do this year. <laughs> but more than that, we've got a great team. I've got a wonderful Toastmaster who's going to be, a wonderful woman who's going to be our Toastmaster today. And I'd like to introduce her to you now. Retired Army Colonel Jill Morgenthaler, a combat veteran of two wars, has received the Bronze Star and the Legion of Merit. She's a three times first place district contest winner, so she's been around contests and knows. She's won the International Speech Contest twice and the Humorous Speech Contest once. Last year came in third for table topics at District 30 Contest. So we know, we've got someone who knows what it feels like to be in your seat and up here on the stage. She's been a Toastmaster since 1990 and a member of Windy City Professionals. It's an advanced Toastmaster club. She and Stan Piskorski are mentors for the Peace Toastmasters as well. Today, the Colonel is a professional speaker wowing audiences with her showdown with Saddam Hussein. I haven't seen that. Author of the forthcoming book, From the Battlefield to the Boardroom, Secrets to Lead and Succeed. Recently, Jill was selected to be a TED Talk speaker, and her talk will be live streamed around the world on April 13th, so you'll have to let us know more about that. Please join me in welcoming Jill Morgenthal. and about the audience. And we're going to do that. We're going to do it right. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> okay. You're also going to see I'm Swiss, which means I'm very punctual, too. Anyway, we do have two contests today, the Table Topic Contest and the International Speech Contest. The first contest will be the Table Topics Contest. And when that contest has concluded, we'll take a 10-minute break. And then after that break, we will conduct the International Speech Contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant-at-arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. Thank you, and let the contest begin. <laughs> the speaking order for uh, the table topics. Contestant number one is Wallace Larson. Wallace Larson, yes. Thank you. <coughs> Contestant number two is Ed Brownlee. Ed Brownlee. Contestant number three is Allison Pickett Floyd. Allison Pickett Floyd. Miss Sergeant of Arms, would you please escort all the contestants out except for our first con contestant, Wallace Larson? We are ready to hear from our Table Topics contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. <coughs> Timekeeper, when I advise you, would you please um, set the timer for one minute during our, between the presentations. After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. 
We will now begin the table topics contest. Wallace Larson, what does respect mean to you? What does respect mean to you, <coughs> Wallace Larson? Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and any honored guests, what does respect mean to me? I, like our contest chair, served a career in the military, and I learned from respect at a very high level, working directly for a three-star in my last capacity. There was a certain amount of respect there that was very important, institutionally required, as a matter of fact. I, at times, though, took it overboard because I didn't respect myself, didn't respect myself. Other times there's respect within a family. Sometimes that's earned, sometimes it's thought of as required just because of bloodlines. I've come to learn that wasn't true because I didn't respect myself. See, I grew up in a journey as a corporate brat. I lived in many different states. And I hid. I hid from myself. Part of that was caused by being bullied in school. I learned to melt into a crowd. I learned to hide. And let me tell you, as an Army officer, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. But with Toastmasters and Al-Anon, a group that helps support family members and loved ones of people that have addicts or alcoholics in their lives, I've learned to find my voice. I've learned to respect myself. See, Toastmasters teaches us two things. One, to improve our speaking techniques. To improve our speaking techniques. To have eye contact. To develop warmth with the audience. But it also helps us find ourselves. And to learn to have respect for ourselves. To grow. And that's what I've done in Toastmasters. And I ask you, when you think about respect, what have you done for others? But more importantly, what are you doing for yourself? Madam Contest Chair. Members, if you will give us one minute, and please we'll have a moment, a minute of silence while the judges are marking their ballots. Do any judges need more time? Okay, next contestant, please. Ed Bradley, what does respect mean to you? What does respect mean to you, Ed Brown? Madam, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, what does respect mean to me? What does respect mean to me? Respect means that you take time 
to examine the individual that you're beginning to have a relationship with. Re means to take back, to, to do again. So you take your time to evaluate the individual, all aspects of that person. And then you begin to analyze the relationship that you and he or she intend to establish. And then you bring your integrity, your integrity, your self-worth, your value, you bring that to that situation. And you see that person through the eyes of yourself and who you think he perceives himself to be. Respect. One of the most profound aspects of human relationships. Respects. Without it, nothing is achieved. With it, especially in America, we can reach that point that they call e pluribus unum, one yet many. And only when we begin to respect one another and to appreciate one another's humanity can we achieve that level, one of the highest levels of civilization. We have an opportunity through respect. We can achieve one of the highest levels in civilization, in mankind, through that one little word, respect. Because if you respect, you appreciate, and if you appreciate, you love Madam Toastmaster. Any judges need more time? Okay, Madam Sergeant of Arms, if you could bring the next contestant. <clears throat> Allison Pickett Floyd, what does respect mean to you? <clears throat> what does respect mean to you, Allison Pickett Floyd? Toastmasters and guests. Uh, respect means that uh, you think highly of someone. I'm, I'm a teacher and so one of the things that I have to explain to my students is often what does that definition mean? You know, I want them to respect their parents, I want them to respect me as a teacher, I want them to respect their classmates and friends. And so, you know, I actually have to define this idea for them. So to treat someone well, uh, to think highly of them, means that you're going to honor their opinion if it's different from yours. Um, you're not going to go into their cubbies or lockers or, you know, take their mechanical pencil because you don't have one. Um, you're going to play by the rules, you know, on the playground when you're playing Foursquare or Kickball. <clears throat> Just because you want to win does not mean that you're going to play unfairly. Uh, respect also means if your parents ask you to do something, regardless of whether you'd rather watch TV or play your video games. You respect them. They, they're here providing for you or giving you this education that uh, you know, they want you to have so that you'll have a better life. Then you go clean your room or you take out the garbage. Um, that's respect. Respect is when you do things for other people because they're giving to you, they honor you, you honor them. And uh, that would be my idea of how I teach my students respect. 
Thank you. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters. Judges, when you're done, if you'll hold your ballot up high for the ballot counters to collect them. I'm sorry. <laughs> all the ballots have been collected. Yes. Have all the ballots been collected? Yes, they have. going to hear um, from Michelle Cavelli on the uh, exciting details, and I mean really exciting details, of our upcoming District 30 conference. Michelle? Yeah. 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 guest, I know where you want to be on April 26th and 7th, and it's at the Skokie Holiday Inn. And you're probably thinking, Michelle, that is such a long drive from here. Why would I want to drive to the Skokie Holiday Inn? What possibly could be happening? It's probably not the food, although the food there is very good. It's probably not the view of the parking lot from the hotel windows. But it's probably because your contestants from today's contest will be competing for the chance to be champions of the district. And for one lucky winner, maybe from this district division, all the way to Ohio. For <laughs> <laughs> their chance to be named International Toastmaster Speaker of the World. Imagine the excitement for us to drive to Ohio to see them compete on the main stage while the international people fly into Ohio in that great big airport. 
<laughs> There's another reason why we want to go to our spring conference, and besides seeing everybody and having fun with our fellow Toastmasters, because everyone will want to be there, it's because we have one of the most famous Toastmasters in the United States and probably the world coming into Chicago for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity acquired by Valerie, Patricia Fripp. Now you're probably wondering, that just looks like another name printed on the program. Who is this person? Why should I care and why should I drive all the way to Skokie? But it's closer than Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering who she is, Patricia Fripp makes $15,000 a day to speak at companies. And if we're not one of the lucky ones whose companies is paying for a very professional speaker to come in and tell great stories, then this is our only chance to hear her. And we get to hear her for basically free. As long as your club registers and pays for the registration fee, you and all your friends can come to Skokie as a road trip and see Patricia Fripp. Now, let's take a little bit of a look like, really? $15,000 is chump change for my company. Maybe. But if you heard Craig Valentine, how many of you were at the fall conference or heard about it? Some of you in this room were. Some of you missed out because you probably heard that people were sitting on the floor in that room to hear Craig. And that was a room that before was not full. So that means a lot of people were there. And you might have missed out. Well, never fear, because now his teacher is Patricia Fripp. Guess how much he paid for those aspiring speakers in the room, although there are quite a few excellent teachers in our own district here. You might be wondering, how much did Craig Valentine, winner in Chicago of the International Speech Contest, not at our district, but the international level, actually pay Patricia after he won? Because he wasn't a very good speaker after he won, per his own comments to us. He paid her. $4,000 a lesson to learn how to be the world-class speaker that he is today. And that's what he told us at the fall conference. And guess what? Patricia Fripp is giving an hour and a half live coaching session by pulling people out of the audience, teaching them how to be better speakers for free. If you come to the fall conference, what? This is not the fall conference. Great. We put that in the program. <laughs> it's spring conference. The great news about the spring conference, to recap quickly, is if your club pays, you and all of your friends can come as part of the registration fee. Number two, you can get actually a pretty good meal for a good price at the Holiday Inn. Number three, you can even get a view of the outside parking lot. <laughs> and even better, if you drive all the way there, there is a mall across the street. So if you need some extra shopping experiences all the way in Skokie, you can drive there and have fun, see your fellow Toastmasters, cheer on your West Southwest Division Contest winners from today, and see Patricia Fripp, one of the best speakers in the circuit today, who very rarely travels outside of her home state of California, but is in fact coming to Chicago for this one time. So I hope that we will all see you there. In fact, just for fun, everyone raise your hand like you're pretending to go. Are you going to go? Yes! I'm Toastmaster. <laughs>